Charlie, and welcome to Potential is Human. It's fantastic to have you here. Brian, thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, good morning indeed. Um, Potential is Human, it's, it, just sound, it just resonates when I hear that. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Like, I mean, I'm going to let you lead this, but yeah, I'd like to like know where that started and what it's all about. Um, but it's nice connecting with you um, personally. I know we've had a few text chats on Facebook, um, but here we are, and what a blessing. Thank you. Likewise, thank you. And yes, I've been seeing your work. I've been seeing what you share. I resonate in so many ways, so I really appreciate you making the time today. Do you want to tell anyone watching or who will watch as well, where are you sitting in the world and what does Charlie's life currently involve and look like? Yes, well, I'm currently in Kailami in a beautiful horse country um, in Gateng, uh, watching the beautiful horses just play from my window um, in the overcast weather. And, and the horses love, love like the drizzles and the rain. I see when it rains, they, they go wild, they play, and they actually roll in the dirt and in the grass. So that's, that's beautiful. I just thought I'd share that image with whoever um, loves horses as much as I do. And then... Yeah, what I'm currently busy with, Ryan, um, kind of just a, an evolution of my life's work in, in guiding people. Um, currently, I'm, I've been, as I've made peace with my past, um, I, I've started working with men and I've started incorporating a lot of my past, which in the beginning of my let's call it a spiritual awakening, I kind of suppressed a part of me um, that that I really cultivated during a professional fighting career. Um, mm. And recently I realized the power of those virtues that I cultivated, which I kind of moved away from, you know, the, the virtues are of courage and discipline you know, an aligned action, the very masculine aspects, you know, when I, when I woke up, um, you know, from, from what I call a sleep, a, a spiritual sleep, you know, I, I, I dived very much into the feminine side of things. But more recently, as I made peace with the past, like I said, I, I started to integrate more of, more of those aspects and those virtues and, you know, started a men's program now I call Awaken Warrior. And I'm having lots of fun with it. And the transformation uh, has been beautiful. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at and what I'm doing. It always, like, touches me when I have these conversations because we don't necessarily know what's going to come through, right? And then I hear just that snippet around how, you know, during your awakening, you tapped into maybe the feminine to a degree greater than actually remembering the masculine. And... We can talk about this because it's a direct reflection of Ryan's experience as well. You know, I felt like as I became more spiritual, if that's what we want to call it, like and I did the work and I became the light and I was gentle and compassionate. But I almost went so deep into that side of things that I forgot about owning our power and like stepping into that masculinity that we also can embrace. So. Charlie, to be honest with you, only in probably the last like four to five months have I started to really integrate more of that power and not just the love and the light, because that's one element and one powerful element of it, right? The light itself. But what is your view on like through your own experience in like awakening to the love and the light, which is essential, and then also realizing like, yeah. hold on, this one side is not totally sustainable in itself. Yeah, Ryan, what, what I've realized is the moment we, we realize how out of balance we are, right, there's usually a polarization, you know, like, like I said, I was a professional fighter during um, my moment of like realizing how far I was out of balance just within myself. And that was a very, very masculine world that I was living mm. in. So that polarization allows us to shift away from you know not just not just the the positive aspects but also the negative aspects but there's that polarization like you said going completely from that masculine so deep into the feminine which is still an unbalanced 
way of being within ourselves until we kind of realize and start to integrate everything and then reaching that balance. So, yeah, I definitely experienced that and it, and it became so clear, you know, how, how the polarization happens and then we start to slowly just integrate and finding that balance point um, yeah. of, of a more integrated um, human being, I suppose. For sure. And that's it, right? It's that word integrated and balanced. So thank you for the explanation. If you wouldn't mind mm -hmm. sharing, let's, you know, like go into the past. Um, life once looked very different for you, Charlie. And from what I've Oof, read yeah. and some of the stuff that you've <laughs> shared, this is open to mm -hmm. you how far back you want to go. But life didn't look like this prior to being a coach, prior to understanding yourself on deeper levels. If I'm not mistaken, you were in a factory kind of job, overworking yourself, depressed, unfulfilled. Can we touch on that for some mm. people who may currently be navigating that reality? Yes, Ryan, absolutely. I, I find great value and I've noticed great value um, in sharing our stories in our past and, and not the glamorous parts, you know, the, the dark parts and the mm. difficult parts because um, people who are going through that. You know, especially now, I realize that I'm so grateful for having gone through such a difficult path early in my life. Um, mm. So that people who are going through that now, because now the world is in turmoil, but I feel at so at such peace. You know, no matter what is happening, purely because I've been through so much darkness, um, and, and I see a lot of people who are now doing the work or have done the work, and now living um, in balance and in peace, being like almost like a, a guide for others, you know, whether you're a coach or a healer or, or whatever we want to call it. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that question. I'd actually like to share, you know, I, I left school. I finished matric when I was very young. I finished matric when I was 16 years old. I went to school very early um, and I started working in a factory. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, I was 16 years old. Um, out of school, I had no idea what my purpose or my mission is. So I did what my dad did, worked in the print media industry, started an apprenticeship, worked in a factory, 12-hour shifts, um, day shift, night shift. So I didn't, my sleep cycles were messed up. Um, and, you know, not realizing back then the importance of our, our body's health and our mental health, I kind of just was you know, going after the money, making, a, earning a good salary relatively um, back then. And that pressure, you know, working 12 hours a day, working um, six in the evening till six in the morning, one week, and then the day shift on the other week, it, it started to kind of get to me unconsciously. I didn't know it. So I, I turned to drugs when um, mm. when the night shifts happened so that I could stay awake. I saw other people doing it and it worked for them and it was an easy way out. And alcohol was obviously also um, a crutch for me, you know, to escape those emotions because I was extremely unfulfilled. I, I, I didn't feel much. I wasn't enjoying my life. Um, so I kind of mm. found that those glimpses of joy when I was drowning out the emotions, you know, with, with drugs and alcohol, and eventually that led to to severe depression, uh, a suicide attempt, uh, which I don't want to go into mm. details. But yeah, it was it was dark. It was difficult. I was I was done. You know, I didn't. The the days I woke up um, dreading dreading the day, and yes, so coming out of out of hospital, living on antidepressants, I discovered. Uh, at Tony Robbins, I discovered the personal development uh, world in about 2007 or 2006. And I actually realized or I was presented with information about the possibility of actually choosing the life, you know, we want to live the way we want to live it. And I entertained the idea um, very shortly after that, um, feeling that I had, I had nothing to lose resigned from my job, 
uh, I tried my hand at, at, at pro sports. I thought that was the next best thing. You know, what could be better than being a famous professional athlete? And yeah, I mean, I think that was kind of a level up. I think that was a level of freedom from, from what I had experienced. Um, and, I, and I think we're constantly evolving into greater versions of ourselves into greater levels of freedom. But that was kind of the next step for me. And it was beautiful and I felt more liberated, although it still was a dark place. You know, in the professional sports, there's a lot of ego involved. Uh, and although it was much more fulfilling than working in a factory for 12 hours a day, uh, I, I felt like because it was a fighting game, I only realized this later that everything was a fight to me back then. You know, my, my relationship, I was always fighting. And, um, I was always fighting to, to provide for my family. So life was literally a fight. You know, my career was fighting, but my entire life was, was basically a fight um, until, until I drank um, a cup of ayahuasca in 2014 that showed me all of this. Mm. Thank you for, for going into, you know, the dark and the journey which got you here because it is right we all we all have this this path that we've walked in order to ultimately start seeing who we really are and realize that life is changing and must change so when it comes to you know suicidal thinking or that quality of thinking charlie and uh, in some people's cases without going into the details of yours you know perhaps even following through an attempt on that the more and more I have these discussions, yeah. the more and more I'm starting to see how common this actually is in modern day society and how important it yes. is for you and myself and others to connect because it happened in some level for me. And I've shared the story as well, you know, that noticing that thinking of actually questioning the value of my own life. And that was when the penny landed for me and that this is not who I am, sure. but it's so sure. common. And I think there's so many people facing this, not knowing how this yes. is the case that their lives have come to this point. So it wasn't your time. And I'm mm. deeply grateful that you're still with us. You know, you were meant to stay and it's very clear why. Um, then you went on this journey yeah. as to being a professional fighter or sportsman. This is fascinating yeah. for me. So I would like to spend a little bit of time here, if you don't mind. Tell us what that Absolutely. life was like in terms of not only the training, cool the dedication and the commitment mm. to that process, right? You, you need yes. to be ultra, ultra, ultra fit, uh, sharp, strong. But then what I want to know is you get into a ring and now you want to, and need to in the profession, fight someone like, what is that mode yes. like? And what is that reality kind of sure. like in terms of a professional fighter? Sure, Ryan. Like, I mean, I, just thinking about it, like the the way that you phrase it, you know, getting getting into a ring. It was it started off with professional boxing, which in some it, which in some sense, you know, there there's, there was a lot of respect and a lot of honor. But after after six uh, six professional fights, uh, I in, injured my shoulder, had a short break, and. Um, that's when this, this EFC and the cage fighting thing just landed in Africa and it excited me. It was like a new challenge. It was like something, you know, even more brutal. I got myself into that and, and that, that actually, that changed the game, Ryan. I mean, you get into a cage, you literally get locked inside of a cage with another human being who is trained, who is trained to, to hurt you. We was trained to submit you. Um, mm -hmm. so, so the mindset, you know, getting into that is, is facing death. I mean, in 2014, in, in February, I had a title fight with, the, with a guy called Zulu Boy. And about 45 minutes before I had to get into the cage, my conditioning coach came up to me and he said, Buto just died. It was a Ghanaian fighter. Um, up against a South African fighter who literally lost his life in the cage 45 minutes before um, I was about to go in there. And that, that was a massive shock to my nervous system, you know, like I've been mm. in there uh, many times, you know, we trained for between six and eight hours a day to prepare for that. 
worked with about six different coaches, mindset coaches, striking, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, boxing. Um, so, so the training aspect of it was absolutely, um, you know, incredible. When I reflect back on it, I don't know how I got through that, how my body, you know, survived that. But I guess I was young and I felt invincible. Um, but, but the night that Bhutto died, and, and that was a massive thing in the African continent, um, I mm. think it was the first time someone ever died in the cage in the African continent that um, we know of. And my life actually flashed before my eyes. You know, I had a, I had a one-year-old son, um, and I thought, what, what if that was me? You know, that's, mm. and I think that was the first time I started questioning where I'm at at that stage of my life. Um, and later that year, I retired. But yeah, I think that was kind of the start of it. But just to touch on the mindset, uh, Ryan, it's it's absolutely brutal. The, the discipline, um, the focus that that you have to cultivate, you know, to be able to just get in there, you know, to just get in there and and like I said, face possible death. Um, it's it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. And looking back in hindsight, you know, realizing how brutal it was, um, I, I definitely am extremely grateful for, for the tools that it has given me, for the resilience that it has given me in now being able to, to guide people because I got people through some mm. rough stuff, you know, but having walked a path of extreme, extreme you know, challenge and danger and difficulty, you know, I do it with such ease and grace, you know, and, and I find that is a very powerful tool or, or gift that I now have, you know, when, when people are going through tough times, it's like, I know you can get through it, even though it seems like you're facing death, um, you can get through this. You're a human being and your spirit is much stronger than what we think. Um, and that's what I realized, like, our spirit is so much stronger than what we can comprehend. And if we can tap into that connection, you know, we can, we can face death and we can face danger and, and get through it because there is an intelligence much greater than our, our human minds um, that, that guides us and that we have access to always. It's incredible what you've just said. So I'm certainly going to hold on to that, you know, like in the realms of facing death, like, we can do it, right? We're so much greater. What I want to ask you is now, you're this fighter and there's Charles and the identity of a professional sportsman. Then you mentioned an injury and then leaving the sport yeah. and shifting for yourself again. What was that like? Yes. Because I can only assume that somebody who's hyper-conditioned, fit, and sees themselves yeah. as a fighter, your nervous system is one of a fighter, now you need to kind of detach yeah. from that and come down from the intensity of that life. So what was it like to yes. leave fighting and allow yourself to like, like climatize again to a baseline that's a bit more normal than somebody who's getting in a ring and needing to fight flight or freeze response all the time? Yeah, Ryan. So how it happened for me, it was, it was a very sudden shift. You know, I had this injury. I ended up um, on on a recommendation by a close friend, or he's actually a, a guide, someone that was guiding me at the time. Ended up on a, on a vision quest, you know, this this um, ayahuasca weekend. Uh, I, I had no idea what I was in for, to be honest. Mm. And you know that uh, that was the, I think the second time that I faced death that I actually. Well, maybe even the third time, you know, um, the suicide attempt, I guess, was the first. Then in the cage was kind of the second time I actually, like, faced possible death um, willingly. And then the ayahuasca basically took me to death's door. But I, I don't think it was a physical death. I think it was the death of that identity um, of this fighter, you know, this this ego structure that, that was also, you know, cultivated through the years because the identity is basically just the collection of beliefs about ourselves and the world and, you know, who we think we are. So that was stripped away from me. That, that, that identity died, you know, it was, it was stripped completely. And then the polarization happened, you know, when immediately after that, that experience, 
I, I resigned. I phoned the, the organization, the, the EFC, the Extreme Fighting Championships. I let them know. I was like, guys, I'm done. And then, like I said, yeah, then there was this massive polarization because I saw that as wrong, you know, because I was shown mm -hmm. the violence. I was shown the trauma. I actually purged so much of that dense energy out of my body during that, that ayahuasca experience that because I was still um, immature in my, in my spiritual beingness, I, I saw things as wrong. So I judged my past as being wrong at the time. So there was this polarization and I went very much into the feminine, very much into the gentleness and the compassion, which was necessary at the time, you know, so that I can actually fully experience and embody that before I actually realize and um, go into a more integrated version of, of who I am now. I totally get it. And I, I, I love that you mentioned it was necessary, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And we could so easily yes. be like, it was wrong for me to go into the deep compassion and light. But now it's made you somebody who understands that compassion, that light, and can hold it very powerfully as you've become more yes. integrated. So, yeah, I don't want to stay too long on the fighting aspect because when I see you, Charlie, like the word that comes to me is like magic. There's a, there, it's like there's a, there's some <laughs> magic to you and you do magic in this world and different words for different people. But with you, it's a very strong, like magic and a type of wizard at what you do. But I'm looking at this guy who was part of the, the EFC, you know, so that world and now the horses and the countryside and the beauty of Kailami bridge that gap for us a little bit, right? So now you leave fighting, you mm. go into this personal yes. development journey and you're really working on yourself. Maybe also touch on the power of plants because it's important for people mm. who, who hear that plant medicine can really work. Maybe someone's being called to the same. So do you want to share anything on how the plants transformed aspects of you on your journey? Absolutely. Like, so that's where it all started for me. Um, you know, so it, it was with ayahuasca. It was um, a, a Peruvian. Um, I, I was told very recently, uh, um, realizing the power of words, that that it's it's teacher plants instead of plant medicine. You know, by a lady called Monica Cromhout. Um, she watched one of my keynote mm -hmm. presentations, so she asked me um, to 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 rephrase that. So I'm doing that, and it makes sense to me. Um, because, you know, these things teach us, you know, it teaches us about aspects of about ourselves. And like I said, I had massive realizations about, you know, the violence and the trauma I was putting my body through as an athlete. And then that started, you know, when I experienced that liberation initially, you know, after that, that experience with the teacher plants, mm. I immediately found someone who could teach me, you know, I worked with, with a shaman, um, two different shaman actually to learn more about these, these teacher plants and how to guide others through these experiences. So that journey started in 2015. I was an apprentice, started working with ayahuasca, started guiding people through ceremonies, through healing experiences. Mm. And at the time, Ryan, um, something really incredible happens because there was such a massive polarization in my own personality and in my identity and in my life. The people around me, my friends, um, my, my ex-wife, you know, it, it was my wife at the time, um, but it was too much for these people. The change was too great. You know, so, sure. so I, I got divorced from my, from my wife at the time. Um, I, I disengaged from a lot of friends because we just um, couldn't sit around the same fire, so to speak. You know, I wasn't interested in, in alcohol and violence and, and mindless stuff anymore. And I, I felt mm. like I have a purpose. Uh, and my purpose was to help other people be liberated, you know, from, from being depressed and unfulfilled. And the only tool I knew at the time was the plants. But what I did then realized is going through this experience, um, 
my life kind of got flipped upside down, right? Like I had no more friends. I was going through a divorce. I was, I was broke, mm. you know, like I didn't, I, I earned money from fighting and I did it like, you know, working with the plants. It, it was a very different mm. dynamic. And I didn't have that guidance to integrate this massive awakening that I experienced, you know, even though I was working with, with medicine men, I was training, you know, these guys didn't coach me, you know, in, in, in how to like solve my life problems. And that's where I saw a common gap, you know, people who were going through these experiences also didn't have that guidance. You know, some people go to the jungle, you know, they have this massive enlightening experience, then they come back and then they don't know what to do with it, you know, because they're in the same environment. And that's when I started studying um, hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming. You know, I did everything I could to understand my psyche better and so that I can guide other people better. You know, this included the Vipassana meditation where you, you really sat um, for like 10 hours a day in 10 days. I did all sorts of mindfulness courses to, to really just give myself the tools so that I can guide people to actually have a more integrated experience after using these plants. And, you know, that evolved into me now creating programs um, and just a personal coaching program where I take people through a private coaching experience because we're all so different, Ryan. Um, and people mm. have, you know, even though there's lots of commonalities, you know, every human being has a different history. You know, we have a different past. We have, we have different um, wounds. Let's let's call them that. But that's where our, I believe our greatest gifts are. You know, it, it's in those traumas. You know, I believe when we can turn that that pain into wisdom, that's when we find our purpose. You're hitting all the spots, Charlie. You really are. It's it's <laughs> awesome to hear your wisdom, and it's it's very clear that it comes from a profound journey. In terms of the plants, yeah. and we're seeing the rise yeah. of how powerful <laughs> plants are in everyone's lives, because the level of knowing that you have, let's say somebody comes to you and says, like, Charlie, like, I can't anymore. Life, the way it is, I just can't take it. I'm thinking of going down the road with teacher plants, in your words. Um, what yeah. would your, let's not say advice or recommendation, but... What wisdom would you offer to somebody who may be turning to plants for the very first time in terms of how they would go forward uh, in this space? Yeah, there's, there's definitely lots, lots to offer in that space, Ryan, like, because it is becoming more, um, I think the knowledge is becoming more available. There's lots more information available. People are more open to it. Um, I think the first thing I would mention is that if they are guided um, to experience or to go embark on that journey is to find someone that is well known, well trusted and very competent in the work that they do. Because these compounds, right, these, when we talk about plants, let's be real here, it's psychedelic compounds, you know, that have a profound effect on the psyche, on your consciousness. So there's a lot of people out there doing the work, doing beautiful and great work. Although I have also seen people come to me who've had these experiences, um, who were not necessarily in a better state than before taking the plants. So I'd say definitely the first and most important thing is find someone that comes highly recommended, um, that is trusted and well-known um, with a proven track record. Um, I'd say that is, that is probably a good starting point. You know, um, like I said, there's a lot of people who are doing this work and coming from a good place, pure intentions, but not necessarily having the experience or life experience um, to guide another human being through such an intense process. Mm. And it's intense, right? That word we need to emphasize on. It's, 
it's intense and that's why we need to be held as charlie's explained by somebody who's extremely experienced has the track record and understands the depth of that space because at times it's it's certainly not for, for sissies right Ooh. yo you know like i mean the the plants took me took me to places where where the cage couldn't, you know, where someone trying to tear my head mm. off, you know, like the plants showed me, like they took me much deeper than, than anything else, to be honest, you know, and, and, and yeah, deep waters. I like to call it deep waters, you know, where, um, where I was blessed in my experiences to, to have beings. Um, uh, one of our mutual friends, Michael van den Berg, you know, he, he, he's yes. a phenomenal guide. Um, I worked with international um, facilitators who were also extremely powerful just in their presence because that's, that's not in, – in, in working with these things, it's not necessarily someone telling you something. It's just what they radiate because of the depth that they have experienced in working with the plants and the life experience they have, you know. We can never not communicate. You know, our heart is constantly pulsating who we are into our environment. And you can feel that when you're sitting with someone who's done the work, who's got the power, who's got the strength, who's got the wisdom. So, yeah, I think, you know, there's, don't worry about someone who talks a big game, you know, just, just trust what you feel and, and make sure there's a track record. There's someone who's, who's gone deep and who's taken people through powerful healing processes. Mm. Thank you, Charlie. That's excellent, excellent advice. And we're so blessed to be able to connect and talk about these kind of things, right? Because I know in your reality, mine as well, wind back a few years, this would be like taboo. And this would be like, what are these two yes. actually going on about? Um, it probably is for some people who yeah. see us still and just keep your heart open. That's the best advice I could give. And it all comes in perfect timing and it's not for everyone as well. It's not necessarily that the plants are the way. No ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, what I have, you know, I, I wouldn't say discovered something that I, I, I realized or I'm realizing more and more and, and, and I like what you say, you know, like opening the heart, you know, that like for me, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. But, you know, what does it mean? You know, people are like, okay, well, open your heart. Like, mm. well, how do I, what do I do? How do I open this thing? You know, and, and I don't think it's something that we just decide to do. I think it's something that kind of happens, you know, like it cracks open. Um, in different stages of our journey. Uh, but one thing I've discovered, and you mentioned that it's not for everyone, the plants are not for everyone, is that absolutely, you know, there's more than, there's a couple of billion of us on this planet, you know, and we're all so different in our tastes, you know, and in the things we yeah. enjoy and in our passions and in our purposes. You know, I believe we're all different puzzle pieces in this big picture, you know, and I think the, the more we stop trying to be someone else and do what other people do and just find our own uniqueness, that's when the puzzle people mm. start to click together and we'll realize how connected we are in our differences. You know, so the plants, I see it as a permission slip, you know, NLP, hypnosis, um, psychotherapy, whatever it is that... I say excites you the most or resonates the most, you know, is probably the, the best permission slip for you to remember who you truly are, which ultimately yes. will then open your heart. You know, so yeah, I see it as permission slips. Um, and if it resonates for you, explore it, do so responsibly, do so with, like I said, once again, and I, and I like to emphasize this, someone with a track record, someone that is trusted, um, whether it's a, a plant medicine guide or a teacher plant guide, or whether it's a, a coach or a facilitator, you know, like feel what your heart says, you know, and, 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 and just 
and just go with there's something that I like to tell people or ask people when they ask me questions, where should I go? I ask them, well, which direction excites you the most? Because I believe that frequency of excitement is our higher self guiding us, talking to us, saying that's a yes. And when there's a contraction in the gut, it's our higher selves or spirit or source or whatever you want to call it saying, "Mm, maybe not. You mentioned a puzzle and what you're saying now just excites me because I see it, Charlie, as like we're all connected. Oh, what is it? Eight, nearly eight billion of us now. Like we're one giant symphony or orchestra, right? And there's no point trying to play someone else's instrument. And you mentioned the puzzle piece. It's like putting the puzzle piece in the wrong place on the puzzle. The puzzle's not complete. You have your piece, be yourself. Whether you're picking up the trumpet or the flute or the violin, whatever, or the tambourines, I mean, you're smacking those things together, right? If that's what excites you, follow that bliss because there's a reason that it feels right. And all that's required, which is sometimes very difficult in a world where we're part of a massive orchestra, but for the music to come together so perfectly, you just have to play your instrument in the best way you know how and from check yeah i've got crazy goosebumps now like from your heart play that <laughs> flute or violin or whatever it is and when yes. you play your instrument yes. your way and charlie plays his and ryan and the people we know if we all just play our instrument imagine the music that is possible oh. yes ryan absolutely and and i be, like i said i believe like i tried to play someone else's instrument you know when i when i kind of realized that i want to be a guide and i want to help people um because Mm. i know now what liberation feels like um i was trying to play someone else's instrument i was looking at how Eckhart Tolle was speaking and how this shaman was facilitating these ceremonies and and you know I tr- I tried to do it that way and it was all like I said it was all love and light but it mm. was only until I started accepting my past and making peace with my past as a former professional athlete as someone who's cultivated focus and courage and discipline and relentless determination only until I started integrating all of that that I start playing my own instrument and truly stepping into my purpose. And and now it's just, now it's a song. Now life is a song, Ryan, because now I can Mm. help other people play their own instruments, uh, so to speak. And this is the one thing that I've recognized when it comes to people feeling, number one, depressed and anxious about life. One thing I've discovered Mm. is lack of purpose. It's people who don't know yet what instrument they are playing, you know, what their purpose is, you know, what their puzzle piece looks like and where it's supposed to fit in, you know. Um, So that's that's a massive thing. Purpose, you know, purpose is is such a huge thing. And when we discover that instrument, that purpose, that that frequency, that passion frequency or excitement or whatever we want to call it, that's when life really starts to open yeah. up um, for me. And that's when the heart yeah. kind of automatically just does this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I don't <laughs> think everyone picks up. Thank, thank you. You know, I, we, now we're talking about instruments and I can see your excitement. <laughs> you can feel mine. It's like <laughs> not everyone though knows which instrument to pick up straight away. Some people pick up that instrument early in life and it's like they know themselves. They know their purpose, right? But we're all on our perfect journey. And I think it's almost an encouragement to like keep picking up instruments. You know, try the flute, try the violin, try the tambourine, try the bass, what's it, a cello or whatever it is like. Because sometimes playing the wrong instrument, and in your case, you know, maybe trying to be like the teachers that we know about or follow someone else's instrumental way, you realized who you are not. And I can say the exact same thing, Charlie, you know, like perhaps I was playing the flute in the beginning and being gentle and graceful. And now I'm like learning how to smash the electric guitar. I don't know if electric guitar can go (laughs) in an orchestra, but we can put one there. And it's, it's, yes. And it's that, right? Because you go on this journey of, let me try this one. Let me try that one. Oh, doesn't quite feel right. No, that's not me. 
maybe I need to try this a bit longer. Yes. And then you, it's yeah. through discovering who you are not that you ultimately come back uh, to who you are. So I don't want to paint the wrong picture that everyone must just know their instruments. The journey to knowing your instrument yes. is actually trying a whole bunch of the, the wrong ones. I mean, hell yes. Ryan, absolutely. I mean, you know what? Like we're, we're, we're in this, these marvelous bodies, you know, with these magnificent minds in this, on this planet where there's so much, you know, and, and I don't believe for one second, right? And I used to buy into this, right? And, and I think it's important mm -hmm. that, that this is coming through because it's coming through. So, um, that when I first initially um, realized or started walking the spiritual path, I bought into the idea of, of sunshine and ro rainbows and things are now just going to be easy, right? But what I've realized is, I mean, if, if, we, if you read a book, right? If you're a reader or if, if you like watching movies, right? What, whatever mm -hmm. your thing is. And for the first half, at least, uh, let's, let's, let's go that deep, that it's just easy and beautiful, right? You will probably stop watching or stop reading that book. You know, I think we came into this experience with these bodies to experience limitation, to experience challenges, right? To experience all of these things, you know, so that, so that we can sink our teeth in to this bouquet of wonder and magnificent so that we can try all mm -hmm. the instruments, so that we can taste all the flavors, you know, until we actually find that thing that we really resonate with and like. But even when we do that, we still want challenges, right? We still want some sort of resistance so that we can keep expanding, you know, because when we experience contraction, then we expand and we're in this life and there's a rhythm, you know, it's not just beep. I think if everything just is easy all the time, that's when we die. That's when it's a flat line. So we need that, that, that pulse, mm -hmm. that rhythm, that, if you look at nature, there's this, there's patterns and there's rhythm and there's pulses and there's cycles. And that's what we hear. We hear for the fullness of that. So let's sink our teeth into that. You know, the, the, the beautiful and the ugly and the nasty and the difficult and the easy and the blissful and the troubling. And, you know, like we hear, let's, let's embrace it all. Mm. I'm like, keep That's going, Charlie, saying. keep going. This is awesome. I forget what you ask me. Don't... Like you ask me a question and you say something and then I, I find myself going off on a, on a tangent. So I apologize for that. No, I love it. Zero apology. We're here to just share, right, and express ourselves. So your expression is so, yes. so amazing. While you ride the crest Thank of you. this wave and I'm watching you like cut the shapes and do Charlie Tell us what you do every day now. Tell us how you're guiding people, helping people to be, let's use that same word, you know, more a more integrated human being. Tell us about your business. I'd love people to hear what you are okay. currently doing and offer through Charlie. Thanks, Ryan. So I started a brand called The Conscious Wi-Fi a couple of years ago. Having no idea what it was going to be about. I just know, I just I actually got that, that vision um, during, during a teacher plant experience in 2016. So the conscious Wi-Fi basically represents, you know, what we are as human beings, you know, these bodies, these, these technologies, you know, we have the central nervous system, you know, that, that mm. acts as the receiver of information, you know, from, from a source of infinite intelligence, you know, we can access insights and intuition and actual information but we can also express you know energy we can express energy through what we think through what we feel through what we speak and through what we do and basically create art which is our life and it's only limited by what we believe so we are so okay. free so 
this is what the conscious Wi-Fi is about, our ability to tap into imagination, to information, to ideas, to intuition, and then expressing, then making art with our lives in whatever way we want, because that's how free we are. Um, so that was the idea. That was the brand that I started, not knowing how that's going to express or flow through me. Started, started working with teacher plants and then started coaching. Um, I started my coaching business, which is also called the Conscious Wi-Fi. And basically what my days look like now, Ryan, is I, I run a coaching program, a private coaching. I work with one-on-one -on -one clients over a period of eight weeks. And my program's called Awaken Warrior. Right, like I said, um, I started to integrate all of those virtues, you know, the, the discipline, the focus, the relentless determination mm. um, with all the compassion and the feminine stuff and, and the enlightened aspects. And I now take people through an eight-week transformation journey um, where we get very clear on what it is they want to create, what is the desired outcome, you know, be it... Mm be it external tangible things you know um, a lot of people you know struggle with with work and with money and with different things and bringing their visions to life so yeah. we create a vision and then we basically recalibrate the identity you know because there's three things i help my clients get very clear on right i call them the three clarities the three clarities that gives us freedom right the first clarity is what we are, you know, because when you realize what you are, then you realize how powerful you are. And that brings you to the second clarity is choosing who you want to be, right? Because we have these identities that's been given to us when we were born, these names, you know, what we should believe in, what we should be doing, how we should live our lives. Those were given to us, but that is not necessarily who we are or who we have to be because of what we are these powerful beings that are free to express ourselves in whatever way we want then we can choose you know what what role we want to play you know and we do that by deciding what do we want in this bouquet of life what do we want to taste you know what do we want to feel what do we want to give you know, and that leads mm -hmm. us to this third clarity, which is our purpose, that twofold purpose, because I believe we all have something to give, right? To give this world our unique gift, that puzzle piece, you know, that fits yeah. in, you know, whether it's a coach, whether you're a musician, whether you're an animal whisperer, whether you work with children, whether you paint, whether you, you know, guide people through meditation experiences, whether you're a pilot, whether you're a soldier, you know, like that is the thing that we're here to give, but then we're also here to experience, to feel, to, to be loved, to, to, to experience pain, to learn, you know? So there's that twofold purpose. So I help people get clear on what we are, you know? And I can't, I can't tell you what you are. You can only experience that directly, but I have a certain tool set for people to actually realize what we are as these powerful human beings you know because there's the human aspect but there's always so the greater beingness and then the second clarity like i said is who you choose to be right what role do you want to play and then we recalibrate the identity you know we we look at what beliefs are not in alignment with that character and then we can change those beliefs and then using that discipline that focus that relentless determination to actually practice and cultivate the characteristics every single day that is required to live that life and to fulfill that twofold purpose. Hope that makes sense. It makes so much sense. So that's it makes basically so what, much sense so when you say I, it. Awesome. So that's what I do basically uh, Monday to Friday, Ryan. I, I guide people through these processes. Um, I work. I also have a group program, you know, called Awakened Warrior, where I, I take people through a very similar process, but it's on a group format. So it's, it's slightly less personal, but every one of my clients gets this beautiful manual where they get to write down certain things every day. I've got little guided meditations that they can listen to every morning. Um, there's some surrendering practices where we basically surrender to 
um, to that greater aspect of ourselves or, or God, if you want to call it that. Um, because I do believe there, there is something that, that the physical mind is not aware of. Um, but certainly exists. And I've experienced that through accessing these altered states. You know, I, I'm sure you, you can resonate to that. So I incorporate a lot of that. Um, what I learned from the plant teachers, what I learned from, from the mixed martial arts. Um, so I've got that group program. And then on the weekends, um, I've actually got a little, I don't know if you know, Secret Sunrise, if you're familiar with that brand. Um, I used to I used to facilitate for them years ago for a couple of years actually and that inspired me you know I love the technology with the headsets and I actually invested in my own technology uh, very similar to that and I started something where I now co-facilitate with different um expressive movement instructors and you know other shamans and we create these beautiful one day retreats um where we take people through these experiences in beautiful locations all over the country um and we just have fun you know so so that is another aspect of of what I do and other than that I love to just play with my children I've got a couple of dogs that that also take up some of my time and I do still a bit of martial arts, a bit of capoeira, you know, something less, less violent, less um, brutal. It's more of a dance, actually. Something that I started recently because I, I really still do enjoy that discipline and the movement aspect and what it does to the body and the brain to, to keep one, you know, connected to that, that warrior spirit, so to speak. See you making art, Charlie, with your life. I totally see you making art. Um, I love that the journey is now looking so different to what it once used to look like. And that's what this is about, right? That's why we're here to yes. grow, to evolve, to be ourselves knowingly and to, to arrive at that sort of place in, within ourselves. So thank you. Thank you for who you are. And thank you that you are holding people this way and showing them that their greatness is absolutely within them in whatever way or form that looks. You have written a short ebook mm. as well, right? Yes, yes, very recently, actually. Very recently, actually. So, and it's called Awaken Warrior, you know. It's called Awaken Warrior. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it was, I actually had such amazing feedback. I mean, I think I've had, like, I mean, my inbox is full of people asking me for the ebook. So I'm like, all too happy now to just share it. I'm giving it away for free, you know, just to just to show people a little bit more of what I do and share some of these what I call principles of power and these three clarities um, that that really when you get clear on these three things, you experience a, a greater level of freedom. Tell people how they can access the ebook or get hold of you if they would like to understand more about these these clarities. Yes, uh, thank you, Ryan. I'm um, so so like I mean I'm open for people connecting with me on Facebook. You know I've got a Facebook uh, business page. You know it's just Charles Veyer. Um And then privately, if if you feel like you want to be my friend, you can add my friend on Facebook. I also have a website called The Conscious Wi-Fi. Um, it's www.theconsciouswifi.com and just pop me a message. You'll find me on one of these platforms, whatever resonates with you best. Just tell me, hey, I want your ebook. I'll send it to you straight away. Um, if you want to have a conversation with me, I'm, I'm always open. You know, I'm always open to connect with people and maybe have a conversation and maybe share a bit of clarity and maybe just also listening because listening is such a, such a potent form of expressing love. Let's leave it right there. You've wrapped it up so well. <laughs> Charlie, thank you. Um, in just the fact that we get to spend our morning like this together, I really appreciate you. I get to well, learn through these discussions as well and constantly refine my well, beingness through what you're sharing. So yes. I appreciate you very, very much. And may you have the best day in Kailami. Enjoy looking at your horses. And I look forward to talking to you again soon and even perhaps co-creating in whatever lies ahead for both of us. Ryan, thank you so much. I mean, just 
what are you doing? Um, I'd like to hear more uh, very soon, um, but I feel the beauty of what you're creating and I see the space that you are creating and the information that you are opening. You're creating this portal um, of, of love and light and information and wisdom for people to access. So I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be part of this. Um, and yes, starting, starting my morning, having a chat to with, with you, um, about just about all the, all the wonderful things. And yes, definitely looking forward to, to more conversations and some possible collaborations and, just once again, much appreciation and love for you, brother. Thank you, Charlie. Likewise. You're a great man. Have an exceptional day and we'll connect very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Have a beautiful day. Ciao.